there's no way for me to do this. How can I do this? These are a couple of the questions I've been getting because of some of the situations that have been going around right now in reselling. And the vast majority of resellers out there don't want to get in trouble. Hey, it's Don. Today I wanted to address a ton of questions that just started flooding in over yesterday's video. Now, I'll have a link to that down below if you haven't seen it. The gist of it is running your business, receipts, invoices, and all of that sort of thing. How to stay safe out there. Big question that I received a whole bunch of times, and I mean a ton. I got personal messages from people that I've known for a long time. A ton of people reached out to me over this topic, so I wanted to address a few aspects of it. If you want to run this as a business, though, you have to understand the difference between your personal property and your business property. Those are two different things. If you're going to start off your business selling your personal property, you've got to set a value for that property. Now, I am not an accountant. I did talk to one, and I would honestly recommend anybody doing any of this aspect talking to an accountant as well 100% you should talk to an accountant get all your stuff written down all the questions you have on a piece of paper take them in there many times you can get a free consultation for 30 minutes up to an hour depending on where they are in their practice so you might be able to get some free answers at least for the very basic stuff you've got now if you're a collector and you want to turn that collection into a business anything that you sell for part of the business has to be business property with a business, you don't mix up personal and business stuff. You have two different bank accounts. You have two different spots. If it's for your business, it has to stay in your business location. If you're working out of your house, your business property has to stay in one confined area and not cross paths with your personal property. It has to be separate. You have to be able to confine it. You can't just say this is business and this isn't. There has to be a dividing line between them. And that goes for stuff that you're selling from around the house. If you're starting with stuff from around the house, you, you've got to declare a value for it. If it was a gift, for an example, you were given something five years ago and you have no clue on what it cost you or anything else like that. I spreadsheeted all of that stuff and wrote an estimated date that I got it. I also wrote down the day that I turned it over to my business an estimated value on that item. You can break it all down in a spreadsheet so you have some documentation, again, the description of it, a uh, technical value at the time for it being used in the whole works. You really can't claim a new value on it. And that's how I started and flipped this over to a business. We took personal property and basically set a value and use that as the property of the business. It was a investment into the business, basically. Now, some of this is going to depend on what type of business you have, whether you're a sole proprietor, an LLC, or an S-Corp. Those are the three types of businesses that a reseller will probably use. If they're a large reseller selling $70,000 or more, chances are they're going to be going for the S Corp. So it just depends on which stage, which type of business you are running as to how some of this would play into effect. Now, in some cases, you can use some of your personal property as a write-off. So you may get a benefit on your personal taxes. Your business would be a different case. They would actually take it as an expense off the business. Again, you're going to have to check on your specific case. All of this varies by state, possibly, as well as your type of business. Talk to an accountant if you want to know in depth on what you can and can't do with that. Another misconception I hear all of the time is you have to line by line invoice, you have to line by line inventory every single thing in your reselling business. That's not actually true. It depends again on your setup, your business itself. One of the key factors is your sales. If you're selling over $2 million a year, you have to itemize every single thing in your business and do an inventory, a yearly inventory. It just depends on, again, your business level, where you're at, and the whole works. Look it up. You can check that out on the IRS's site. Again, I'm going to repeat this again. I am not an accountant. 
check out your specific situation with an accountant. If you want to run this as a business, it would be worth the while to make sure that you are doing it correct, legit, and you have reasoning for why you are doing something a specific way. Now, in some cases, again, depending on your business, some of your personal property you can actually take money out of. You can sell it to your business. Again, I would look into how that works. We use part of our personal property and use that as an expense through a startup cost when we first started the business. You're allowed to have startup costs that you can amortize over so many years. So there's nothing technically wrong with that. You just have to do it properly. You have to account for everything you're bringing over. That doesn't mean necessarily that you have to keep inventory specifically, but it does mean that you have to account for the items that you are turning over from personal possession to business possessions, basically. This keeps everything straight. Again, you need to separate personal from business. They have to stay apart. You cannot intermingle those. You have to have separate everything when you're doing this. Whether you're starting off small or not, you should still do it the proper way from the very beginning so you don't get yourself in trouble. You never know what will happen. I never thought in my personal wildest dreams that I would be a reseller full-time. I never thought that was possible. I did, though, start running it as a full-fledged business because that's how I knew how to do things. If you're not up on that, I would honestly check out, again, a accountant. That is your first line of defense on making sure that you set up your business correctly, that you account for everything correctly. Now, another huge comment I got a ton of is when you're buying things like collectibles and things like that that are used. If you're at a garage sale, you can write yourself a receipt. You can ask them to sign it, the person that you're paying, tell them for tax purposes. If someone's running a garage sale, technically they are supposed to report it as well. Most cities, especially like around here, you have to have a license and a permit. So you are declaring you are running a garage sale. Now, I learned the garage sale aspect the hard way. Somebody reported us. I had no clue that you needed a permit. That was many years ago. The sheriff actually showed up at my house. He gave me time to go down and get the permit. It was five whole dollars and then bought something from my garage sale. That was my learning experience. I never did it again. I always checked into the rules and regulations on that. If you're running a reselling business and you run a garage sale, you have to report that as well. That's income. you got to be careful on all of that aspect of it. Now, likewise, if you're at a flea market or something like that, you can, again, write out a receipt see if the person will sign it. If they refuse to sign it, I literally write refused to sign it. An end of story. If they're in a booth or an antique mall or a flea market, they are paying and are supposed to report all that. Take a picture again of where you are at and go from there. I just save it in a file. If you're at a garage sale, it's very easy to take a picture with a garage sale sign there. Half the time, you can actually get it with their mailbox in the shop. If you're at a thrift store, you're going to get a receipt, so there's no problem there. If you're buying a collection and meeting someone off of Craigslist, again, I like to have it confirmed. I check them out before I even personally buy it. I ask them, where did you get the items from? You know, Were they childhood? Did you buy them? Are you a reseller? I ask all those questions so I don't waste my time or risk anything. When I get there as well to meet the person, I have a receipt ready to go. Again, if they're not going to sign it, I just write refuse to sign it. But I do go to a place where it's videoed. So if I'm going to meet somebody, I'm going to sit outside of the police department around here under a video surveillance with lighting and the whole works. So there's no question about who I'm meeting if something happens. I write down the date and time that I met the person. So if later on it comes back that something isn't legit, they can worry about it from there. I have all the documentation to show that I did my due diligence and, and try to at least research the situation to make sure it wasn't stolen goods or anything else like that. Your mileage for your drive over to the place to meet somebody should hopefully match that same time frame as well. So there's collaborating information as well. If you have to take cash out, that should match the same time. So you've got more than just, hey, I met this and here's a receipt. Now, I know that may sound like overkill for some folks out there, but if you get bigger or you ever get audited, you're going to have to produce receipts. If you don't have receipts for something, you can't claim it as a cost of goods. If you're going to claim something on your tax return, you have to have a receipt of some form to show where the money's going. You can't just make something up out of thin air. Now, if you're a collector and you're using your collection to turn that into a business, you have to declare basically a value for those items. 
Again, this is basically you'd be selling your property to your business, and that would be your startup cost to get your business going. It depends, again, your business. You have to be very careful on this. Check with an accountant, as I've said many times in this video. There are many different ways to do something. There is not just one specific way to do all of this. Again, it depends on your business. Now, if you create something, you're a crafter on top of this, you turn things into other things and then resell them. You are a manufacturer as well. So there's other rules and other things that you do and don't have to do that other people may or may not have to. Your costs will be different because you've got initial costs into it, you've got labor, and then you've got to sell to your own original creation. So again, talk to an accountant on that. There are many other aspects that you can write off if you're a creator or a crafter like that. You can deduct a ton of those expenses that you would have, the cost of all of that, but you have to have receipts. So back with the collector aspect of it, with your personal collection, you can write out an itemized list of what you turn over, and that is technically your receipt. Now, that is not an invoice. But for a collection of vintage collectible items, you just have to have a chain of custody, basically, to show where they came from so that the, they're not any chance that they're stolen. If you mysteriously walk up on a million dollars worth of jewelry, someone's going to question where you got that. You've got to have documentation. I personally would never buy a million dollars worth of jewelry if I couldn't prove without a shadow of a doubt where they came from. Did the person I'm buying them from get them legitimately? I would always worry about that for no matter what I'm buying. You have to. You have to. You've got to check out the story. You've got to make sure this is on the up and up. A big giveaway is if they don't want to meet you in a big public place like in front of the police department or at the fire station. If they want to meet you in some alley or a parking lot of a, a quickie mart or something, I wouldn't do it. It's not something that I would ever risk at all. It's just not practical or, or healthy for your business at all. Do it right. Do it properly. If you're turning it over from your business, you've got to separate it. Transfer it over to your business. Declare a value on it. You can take that much out as the initial cost in it. Again, look into it. It depends on your specific business. There's nothing wrong with using personal property to start your business, but you've got to actually basically transfer it into the business itself. Now, I know there's a few more technical wording and a little more to it, but I'm just giving you the basics there. Again, I'm not an accountant. We run it all by an accountant. I pay one on a monthly basis to handle our taxes and other aspects of our business. Every month for many, many years, we've paid an accountant for all this aspect, especially with our uh, employees and stuff. They handle workman's comp and employment insurance and all of that stuff. No sense in risking it. One other thing I should say, too, you can't keep changing the way you handle whether you do inventory or not. If you set it up a certain way, you should keep it that way. If you do change it, just be able to give a valid reason why you're changing, whether you're doing inventory or not, and all that aspect of it. Look into it. Line item is not the only way to do this, but hopefully that will answer some of those many questions I've had out there on these aspects of it. If you're wondering what you should do, or can you do this, or can you do that, ask an accountant. It would be worth the one-time expense of paying for a 30-minute consultation with an accountant. Check them out with the Better Business Bureau or any of your local departments to make sure that they're on the up and up before you talk to them. Have a list of all the questions you have made out before you ever sit down so you can take the most effective use of that 30-minute time frame or whatever time frame you're paying for. You'll get all your questions answered that way. You won't be wasting time. You'll get right to the point and you'll be done. End of story. It won't cost you anymore if that's what you need to know. Nothing wrong with asking for help. Nothing wrong with paying for someone to do that for you either. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
your right hand. Now place your left hand here. Take off your hat. Raise your right hand. Now put your left hand here. Please take off your hat. Raise your right hand. Hmm. Now put your left hand here. Will you please take off your hat? Raise your right hand. Hmm. Now put your left hand here. Take off your hat. Raise your right hand. Will you get rid of that hat? Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth? Huh? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth? Are you trying to give me the double talk? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth? Why don't you answer him? He's talking pig Latin. I don't know what he's saying. He's asking you if you swear. No, but I know all the words.